Welcome back to GearWire.com. I am Owen O'Malley, and this is the second part of our look at a pair of radial boxes uh, that work great together. Uh, this is the radial JDX, the amplifier DI box. Uh, this gets placed in between uh, your amp head and your speaker, uh, and it emulates the sound of a mic'd cabinet, a cabinet mic'd with a 57. Now you can combine that signal uh, with an actual mic'd cabinet single, uh, signal, uh, and that is where the radial phaser comes in. Uh, the radial phaser is a time alignment tool, a class A phase adjustment tool. Basically, uh, there's a, just a few controls here. This, it, it works really great with the JDX, although it works great uh, with any, sig uh, any single source that's being mic'd with two mics, or with, for example, uh, a direct source and a mic. Right now we've got this hooked up in line after the direct source and before our mixer here. Uh, and let's just go over the basic controls. We've got our input and output, both an XLR version and a balanced quarter inch version. Right over here we've got our phase uh, adjustment section. And over here we have a filter section. We'll go into specifically what those do later on, but there's a ground lift here. Uh, there's a power control. Uh, both of these pedals are active pedals and are powered by included power supplies, these cranberry cables, very classy. Uh, so what exactly is phase alignment? Well, I've prepared a little presentation for you. So here's my rudimentary uh, description of how phasing works with uh, a guitar signal. Uh, as you can see here, we've got my speaker. Uh, here we've got, let's say, a close mic 57, and let's say a distant mic condenser. Now here's our sound wave traveling from the speaker, from the source, past both the microphones. And as you can see, each microphone is seeing this wave at a different point in its cycle. For the 57, we're seeing the wave at a peak, and for the condenser, we're seeing the wave at a valley. So what does that mean? Well, I'll show you. Here's our two waveforms as the microphone is seeing it. One is seeing the waveform start at a valley, and one of them is seeing it start at a peak. So what happens is that when these waveforms are summed, these valleys and peaks cancel each other out, and that is how you lose frequency in phasing. Now what the phaser time alignment tool does is move the phase of one of the sources so that your peaks and your valleys are aligned, like so. That way, when the signals are summed together, they play nice and they support each other. And you get a fuller sound and uh, you get less phase cancellation. So with dual mic sources, you're hearing or, or seeing most or more of the frequency spectrum that you, than, uh, than you would with phase cancellation. So you kind of get the most out of dual mic sources, which is the whole point of dual micing a source anyway. So now that we know what phasing is, uh, let's hear what it sounds like. We've got uh, a couple of controls on here. On the left side, we've got our phase controls. Let's turn it on. And as we sweep through the phase cycle, let's hear what that sounds like. You can hear you know, how greatly uh, the phase cancellation does affect uh, your tone. Um, and basically what you'd use this to do is just to dial in that spot where it's, you're sort of minimizing the cancellation and you're getting your, basically the most out of your full frequency spectrum from both combined sources. That sounds pretty good right there, I think. Let's move on to the second section of the phaser, which is the filter section. Now the filter comes in handy because, you know, obviously that sort of, you know, single sine wave uh, is an oversimplification of what the frequency spectrum looks like. It actually looks more like, you know, 
sort of, uh, I guess, ocean topography where you've got peaks and valleys all over the place because different, uh, you know, uh, different ends of the spectrum behave differently in different situations. Base frequencies are longer uh, and travel more slowly. The uh, high frequencies are shorter. So with your filter, you can really sort of fine tune your sound and really get the most out of your frequency spectrum uh, by applying the effect only uh, above a certain range that you specify. So let's turn our filter on. <laughs> Now, by turning this dial counterclockwise, I'm basically, basically bringing down the threshold, and the range right here is from uh, 38K uh, down to 300 hertz. So uh, let's start dialing back and hear how it affects the sound. That sounds pretty decent. Uh, so you can see how the filter really radically affects your sound, but also it helps you get the most out of uh, a single source that's mic'd uh, with multiple mics. Um, now it works great with the radial JDX di uh, direct amplifier direct box and with a mic'd cabinet, but you can really use it on any source that you're using two microphones on. Uh, if you've got a snare drum that's got a top and a bottom mic, phase align that, get the most out of your snare. Uh, if you've got an acoustic guitar that you're close miking and distance miking, uh, you can dial in and uh, you know the the fullest sound with the radial phaser. It's a tool that is it's almost a must-have in the recording studio, I think. Uh, although it is also uh, an excellent live tool, they've got a different version of this uh, called the Phaser Bank, which has basically four phasers in one unit. And Radiohead has been touring with that live to get the most out of their live set up for all their guitars. Uh, so it's a, a pretty excellent tool. I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, uh, Radial has yet to make something that I'm really totally, I, I don't totally dig. I mean, they make some pretty excellent stuff and the Radial JDX and the Phaser are no exception. They are pretty specific tools that do what they purport to do uh, excellently. So you've been watching GearWire.com and I am Owen O'Malley and thank you for checking us out.